Welcome to this video on educational video creation. In this session, we'll discuss ways that we as educators can work towards creating online learning content that is accessible, engaging, effective, and most importantly, translates the amazing work that you already know how to do in a physical classroom to an online space. We'll cover tips on online course design and tips on recording videos. But please remember that this session is far from comprehensive. I hope it will serve as a starting point if you are new to creating digital learning experiences. And if you have ideas that aren't covered in this session, I hope you will share those ideas and resources so that we can all learn together. Let's start by discussing online course design. The first thing to recognize is that all of the things that make you an awesome in-person teacher are still relevant in the digital space. There are some important considerations and changes to make when designing video content, but the basics of curriculum design, things like setting clear learning goals, designing aligned activities, and assessment of student learning, all of these will still happen, but they may look slightly different. One of the major challenges with online learning relates to retention and engagement. It is very easy for students to skip assignments or stop attending class altogether because the community pressure of an in-person class is so much lower in an online course. Students might also find learning in an online format more stressful than in-person if they don't have a good internet connection or they struggle with using technology. Retention and student engagement are closely tied, and research shows that when students feel like they are engaged members of a community, that their voice is important and others want them there, students are more likely to overcome challenges and stay enrolled. So our goal as online educators is to create an environment where students feel like they are part of an active and warm community. So how can we accomplish that? For courses in a cohort model, prioritize community building as well as formal learning outcomes. Create spaces where students can come together and chat, play games, share burdens, and network with each other. Also, try to offer multiple ways for students to engage with each other, activating diverse learning styles. You can encourage the use of online whiteboard spaces for visual learners, use discussion boards, or ask for reflections using voice notes or videos as alternatives to text. Just like in-person classrooms, students often feel more invested when they have a clear understanding of the progress that they are making. Help them by setting clear milestones with associated achievements. One easy way to do that is through the use of quizzes and games throughout your course. There are a lot of fun ways to check for understanding that avoids the stress that comes with the word quiz. Kahoot and AHA Slides are two fun platforms that give students a way to check what they know and also give you feedback on what students are struggling with. You can also consider offering digital badges or certificates when students complete a significant module in your course. Some learning management systems allow you to automate the awarding of badges when students complete certain activities, but you can do this in a low-tech way as well by simply congratulating specific students in a cohort-wide email. Let's talk about accessibility. Online learning has opened up access to a lot of people who couldn't access education before, whether because of finances, geographic location, or a host of other reasons. But online learning still presents accessibility challenges for many learners. Here are a few key tips to promote accessibility in your online videos. Use big font sizes on your slides. All main text should be at least 30 point or larger. This means that you can't fit as much text onto one slide, so split up your slides. Use readable colors. Use font and background colors that are easy to read, especially for colorblind people. Use sans serif fonts. So if you use Roman letters on your slides, use fonts that don't have 
feet or serifs because these are easier for people to read quickly. Use subtitles and transcripts. This is especially useful when the language that you are teaching in is different from a student's first language. And just like you might in your physical classrooms, use simple words, speak clearly, and speak slowly. There are a lot of tools that use artificial intelligence to automatically create subtitles, but not all languages will be supported. So you may want to create subtitles manually. For example, after uploading your video to YouTube, you can edit the auto-generated subtitles or add your own manually. One huge advantage of digital educational content is that you can reuse the same video for course after course. Evergreening means making digital content that you can reuse over and over and over again. But to accomplish this, you have to be a bit intentional about what you say and do in your videos. Here are a few things to keep in mind. No dates. Don't put dates on slides or talk about dates in videos. As much as possible, don't have a set order to your assignments in case you want to change the order to your assignments later on. Try to make each assignment a separate module that you can shift around if needed. No faculty faces. This tip only applies to courses that might be taught by multiple different professors. Avoid recording lectures of the professor's face and instead focus the video visuals on slides, videos, and other content. This takes the focus away from the individual teacher who might change in the future. If you want to include a personal welcome message with the professor's face, make a separate welcome video or put that message just at the beginning of the video so that it can easily be edited if the professor changes. Separate course content from assignment instructions. So for example, in the first iteration of your course, you might want students to watch the video and then post their questions on a discussion board. But the second time you offer the course, you decide that actually you want students to call into a live office hours session to discuss questions. To prepare for these kinds of situations where you might change how you want students to engage with the curriculum, share your instructions in a separate place from the video. All right, you have your curriculum ready. Let's get into some concrete technical tips for recording your video. Tip number one, use a script. You might be used to presenting and lecturing without a script, but it is very challenging to create videos without a set script. When you decide not to use a script, you will end up doing a lot of re-recording and video editing to correct mistakes. Tip number two, turn off your video when recording a screen share. It is very easy to forget but when you are recording, if you keep your video on while recording your screen, many recording softwares will include a thumbnail video of your face overlaid on the screen. And this might cover up some critical information that you want your students to see. Tip number three, start with simple tools. For most of my videos, I just use a combination of Zoom screen recording and whatever video editing software comes with my computer. Most Apple computers come with QuickTime screen recording and editing software, and newer PCs will come with Xbox Game Bar, which you can use for screen recording and editing. Once you feel comfortable recording simple videos, you can experiment with more advanced video editing techniques and animations using tools like iMovie, Premiere Pro, Canva, Biteable, and Descript, just to name a few. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll share your feedback and your own ideas for how to make effective digital educational content. Let's keep learning and growing together.